Well, guys, welcome to another anime review. I had the opportunity to see this movie in theaters tonight with my wife. We Hi had a guys. great time. Thanks for joining me on this review. You look amazing. You spent an hour in front of the mirror. True dedication. It looks great. Thanks. Hi, <laughs> now. You look. You look great. You look just like uh, Usagi or Serena or whatever dub you appreciate <laughs> watching. She's fighting evil by moonlight. She's winning love by daylight. That's right. She's the one. She is Sailor Moon. In this case, Sailor Moon R, the movie. Viz Media has beautifully remastered and shown in theaters which we got to see tonight. There's still one more showing of this movie on the 25th. That's going to be Japanese with English subtitles, but since we grew up with the dub, I think it's one of those animes that you kind of have to watch it with the dub, at least for us. At least for us, yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with Dragon Ball Z. I just, I can't watch the Japanese dub on that. It's like Sailor Moon's kind of the same way. And Yu Yu Hakusho is another one I can't watch. Yeah, pretty much anything that we, like, when we were young and we first saw for the first time, it's like you want the voices you, or or at least close to the voices you remember, because this is a new dub. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we uh, definitely want to talk about, is the fact that this is the first time this movie is being shown in America completely uncut, because this original VHS that I grew up with was heavily censored, and... Very censored. I think Sailor Moon in general <laughs> was uh, pretty Americanized back in the day. Yeah, like most anime that came to our country, got very heavily uh, censored in terms of it removed anything that was hentai or yeah. it was Yahweh or Yuri. Yeah, so yeah. It was all like that's gone. All of it was gone. Now it's like it's back. And it's an original form. Some things actually make more sense now because it's back in because there were some things where I was just like, huh? It's <laughs> true. I remember watching it for the first time uh, on that VHS thinking, I really enjoyed that movie. It was fun, guilty pleasure, just silly, good time. And that's how, kind of how I view Sailor mm -hmm. Moon. It's just a big, fun, guilty pleasure. It's so cheap. Easy. It's so silly and over the top, but I've always loved it. And I have no problem saying that because I'm a man and, and men are al allowed to like Sailor Moon, in my opinion. So <laughs> that's just my opinion. You're talking about the fan service part of that? Uh, men are allowed to like that too. But I also have a deep connection with Sailor Moon um, on an emotional level and don't judge me. He had a crush on her, clearly. <laughs> or one of the other Sailor Sun sheets. I'm not sure which. But it's true. This does make more sense, watching this more streamlined version of the story. Mm -hmm. Which, just in case you don't know, this film is essentially about Young Tuxedo Mask, uh, or Mamoru, as he's known in the Japanese. Mm -hmm. When he was a little boy, his parents were killed, and he befriended a young boy named Fiore, who vanished and promised one day he'd come back and bring him flowers or something mm -hmm. because that was sort of their little connection they had with each other. Yeah. He comes back as an adult. He has a grudge of some kind. He might be under a spell. It's, you know, I don't want to spoil it for you, but if you've never seen this movie, I personally think it's a ton of fun. <laughs> it's so fun. It's just funny. It is. The entire thing just makes you laugh the entire time. It's fun. Who cares? It's the great. The theater was roaring with laughter the entire time. Yes, it is silly. Yes, it's over the top. Yes, it has hilariously stupid lines. Yes, there's all these repeat sequences of them getting their powers and putting on their suits and announcing everything they're about to do. Kind of like the Power Rangers announce everything they do before Literally they do it. Everything. They could spend like two minutes announcing their powers and the bag. I could just kill them if they really wanted to when they're right? announcing it. But it knows it. It knows that it's silly. It relishes it. it. It's just like, hey, this is what we are. Enjoy us. That's why you appreciate it, because it's just, it's just good fun. It's so silly. I mean, I know it's like 20, almost 30 years old at this point. It came out in 93. Right. It's almost 30 years old at this point. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. Oh, it's close to my birthday. Oh, slash that, slash that. I, I'm not almost turning 30 soon. No, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> Then you're going to be married to an old woman. The thing that for me makes this movie work is, and really the show, are the characters. They're more fleshed out than you might expect, even in a short movie like this. Because mm -hmm. it's about their bond. You know, it's about the, the friendship that they all have and the fact that they all are sort of wounded people that were loners, didn't have too many friends, and so you can connect with them. And because of Usagi, they all kind of come together as a team. And so it's cheesy, yeah, but it has a good message for, for kids. You know, if you watch the movie when you're younger or the show, it, it's, it's like, look, you might be a loner, you might have problems, you might not have a lot of friends. That's okay. You can still be a badass. It's supposed to be whimsical, it's supposed to be funny, but also supposed to teach you little lessons about things like greed, jealousy, anger, because most of the time they're fighting things that are feeding off of strong negative emotions. 
I ran home from school to watch this when I was on Toonami. It was like it was one of the first shows from uh, on like 4 p.m. I think on Toonami, and, and I usually miss the first few minutes because my mm-hmm. bus. I was one of the last stops, mm-hmm. so my bus got there pretty late, probably around like 3:55 p.m. And I would just dash of like Toonami starting in five minutes. Let's get this going. Yeah, I remember being a little kid, and it came on in the morning, so I would literally skip getting on the bus and have my grandmother take me to school so I could watch Sailor Moon in the morning. Now that's dedication. Because, I mean, I had an hour and 20 minute bus ride. That's long as hell. And it's a really long bus ride. So I'd rather. Now fuck that. Let's watch Sailor Moon. Right. So I'm much rather <laughs> watch Sailor Moon, get to sleep a little bit longer, get breakfast, and then go to school. Right, I just, of course. Because I, I was the first pickup on, in the morning. Let's talk about some of the things they have most definitely put back into this movie that was originally not in that version. Oh, no. There's less of a friendship vibe going on with Fiore and Tuxedo Mask. And it's certainly, I think there's more of a romantic uh, love, especially in Fiore, from, from his standpoint. Mm-hmm. Uh, that he, uh, More of a romantic affection that he has. He, he's very controlling. There's even a part where he's like, I'm the only one who's allowed to give you flowers. It's very controlling. Yeah. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, they also threw back in the lines of where the girls are sitting at um, Ray's house and they're talking about how, oh, well, it's totally okay that people are gay and that they know people who are. And it's totally cool. We're okay with that type of love. Whatever. It's just, he just happens to be in a relationship with Usagi at the moment. It doesn't want to be in a relationship with Fiori. So it's like... In the 90s, whoever had the rights to this, they were like, oh, I don't know about that. Oh, that's too sexual. Oh, gosh. And so they made it, like, they took out all that subtext. They did the same thing with the show. They had the the cousins. Right. The uh, what cousins. was it, Neptune and Uranus? Yeah, they were. Who were not cousins. Who were definitely not cousins. They were most definitely lovers. Absolutely. In, later in the series. Yeah. And um, they did that with a lot of series. We got Card Captor Sakura. Sakura's older brother and his best friend in the American version were actually in the Japanese version very much in love with each other and even have um, Sakura's boyfriend at one point be thinking maybe he has a crush on Sakura's older brother's boyfriend. So there's a long history of this. Uh, One of the biggest accusers was Four Kids. That was a company that did a lot of anime. I think they had Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh and Digimon Mm -hmm. and they even did, I think they did some edits of DBZ back in the day, and and they are atrocious edits. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, let's just make everything Looney Tunes, right? But it's really nice to see this movie in theaters, uncut, beautifully remastered, by the way. This it movie looks great. Remastered. They did a really good job with the transfer. I think the humor is there. I think they retained the humor of these characters. Mm-hmm. The tragic backstory of some of the characters, actually, is there. It's not kiddified. It's not like, you know, oh, your parents... They just were dreadfully injured in a car crash. You know, your parents fucking died. Sorry, they're dead. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's there. And I really appreciate that. As you said, this is a fan service, fun, guilty pleasure, silly movie. And mm-hmm. the way I view Sailor Moon is, you already know if you like it. If you like Sailor Moon already, you're going to like this movie. If you've never heard of Sailor Moon before, just don't, you don't even have to watch it. Sailor Moon is one of those things where it's either you're going to like it, or you're not going to like it. Right. That's it. It's either going to be, you fall in love with these characters. And it does take a while to like get really into it. It's totally a guilty pleasure thing, but I love it. Yeah. And you start to grow with these characters as they mature through the series. Mm-hmm. So the movie just kind of plays right into them maturing until Definitely. eventually the end of it. Yeah. I read the mangas too, so I have a lot more depth in regards to some of the stuff that goes on. But the anime does a really good job of making... It obvious what sure. manga was trying to present. Yeah, I think when when you're already a fan of the anime and you've read the manga and, and you have all that backstory, it's easy to take that and just sort of attribute it to mm-hmm. this movie and you feel like you, you already know and you go along with it. I said the same thing in my reviews of the, the two most recent Dragon Ball Z movies, Battle of Gods and Resurrection F. If you just walk into those, it's kind of like, what what the hell is going on? But if you already appreciate these characters, then you're going to enjoy it more. And I think I had a great time with this movie. I think we both, the whole audience, oh my God, they, everybody loved audience. it. People were like cosplaying and everything. So There's little kids there that were dressed up. They had the whole little Sailor Senshi outfits on. It was adorable. Definitely. And it's like older parents that were our age brought their kids who were middle school elementary school age children right, which right, is right. kind of hard to think about but we'll, we'll ignore that <laughs> that's part. when i started watching this right show. that's when i started watching that show and now there's people our age with kids that age right it's weird i always connected more with jupiter and mercury because i was more like them than as the other sailor senshis the books and the reading yeah and the cooking yeah books yeah. cooking books yeah. cooking 
be, being very protective of my friends and very much willing to beat the shit out of guys, <laughs> being a bit of a loner, having a lot of pressure to do good in school. Right. That's why I, I, I felt for them more. Yeah, I've always loved the characters in this show and in the movie in particular. I think it's the best Sailor Moon movie. Mm-hmm. I think it's really well directed in regards to what they're trying to do. It's fast paced. It has good action. It has mm-hmm. good characters, good humor. I like the fact that Fiore is like this really damaged goods character and it has some actual mature themes in there as well. So in the long run, like I said if you've never seen Sailor Moon this movie isn't going to appeal to you if you've never seen it and don't care about anime in general I certainly would not recommend this but if you already like Sailor Moon like we do then you're probably going to enjoy this movie just like we did I'm going to give Sailor Moon R the movie an A minus and I'm going to give Sailor Moon R a B plus cool so very similar yeah definitely again thank you very much for joining me on this video you look lovely thanks very much for seeing the film it was a lot of fun i'm always happy to go see films with you i especially like when we get to go see anime in theaters hopefully we can get to see more anime in theaters it's a rare opportunity it really is i almost think so i can get these off my head (laughs) okay guys thank you so much as always for watching Uh, i also look forward to more anime this year and look forward to more anime reviews i'm trying to do more on my channel Guys, thank you very much for watching, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.